being let through. You would expect NIP to just pinch that one, take it away right off the bat. To where now we come in to the side for TS. And again, jungle uh, being a big thing. The Vi actually being banned out by themselves, kind of leaving that Wukong as the obvious answer for them to go towards. We've also seen for the side of TES, they haven't been always been huge on picking AD carry right away. We've actually seen they have been one of the teams that sometimes opt into picking their whole top side on first three, but it looks like this time around, they are just going to look to take away the Sibelios and pair it with the Wukong. Same pick's going to come through, but at least we know the direction of the fix. Lyric, Vi not available, so then you go, hmm, all right, well... Viego, and then things like Nautilus. Shadow is a different man, though. He's smiling. I don't do this to a Shadow. This would be a banger. God, you'd have a, a lot of circles so far in your comp as well, wouldn't you? No, ah, there's yeah. no way they'd do it. I would have loved it, but had they not locked in the Nico, I think there'd be some options there to play it with some other AD laners, but the Viego does come through. Jenk's going to be this third lock-in, and now it's going to be up to the side of top esports. I was going to say, if you want to try and get, like, a winning matchup. We could see Rookie once again go towards the Syndra, which he's played before, but we'll just go with the stronger pick of the Ari. A lot more balanced of a champion in terms of having more mobility. You're able to answer, like, look to roam more, uh, go in deeper with your jungler, and try and get backline access onto Botix Jinx. How crazy is this seeing Jinx and Aphelios in a game? How, how yeah, nuts is that? How what? And Wukong versus Viego? Like... Oh, man, it just feels so exciting to get into this game with all these new meta picks. Uh, again, we don't know what the support could be, but if they're saying anything like Brom or Nautilus, which is banned away, Nas gone there too, Lyric. Rakan? No yes. way. That's nuts. I was going to say that they need to ban this because this is Dwa's go-to pick. But hey, there's no one who knows Dwa's go-to picks better than Jackie Love himself. With Jackie Love playing alongside him for so long so the meta does just continue to be stock and standard now hmm i wonder if we get like a scion or something you know that doesn't sound like a pick we've seen all too often is oh this actually would be fun this would be different hey with all the sarcasm away draw did he just watch i want me or is he gonna go thresh okay somewhat different now you said a scion there's no way we get a scion here in this game lyric um or is it going to be a Gragas instead? That's new, isn't it? That's so different. You know what? It, it brings a bit of excitement. He brings the drinks, you know? If you're having your own party, bring your own yeah. beer. We already got NIP staying on top of that. And now for top esports. Oh, it's not It's not going to be the Scion, right? It's going to be the Orn. Honestly, Orn. I take an Orn. We actually don't get all that many Orns here in the LPL. Ah! Oh. Uh, I... Oh, God. Well. Dear we've, had Lord. Once. we've had Scion 17 times, and now we move the count up to 18. But hey, you were selling everyone on it earlier. Like, hey, these this is a different breed of matchup. This is top esports. They're a little bit crazy. You know, they have a bit of a bit of a killer instinct. And NIP very much following suit. So even though the drafts are the same as the drafts that we always get, and you know, we have to accept <laughs> that that's the world we live in. Uh, I think we can be set up for more action this time around. Very dynamic mid jungles coming through as well that can be open on the map. And when you have Rakan versus Thresh, thank God no enchanters because it means that these supports are constantly going to be true. looking for opportunities. That's true, man. That's a positive. Did I sell you? Did I get you back you in? You did. You, you sort of got me back in. Look, I just can't <laughs> wait for a new patch. Get me out of here, bro. I am so done. Oh, the, the fact I was looking towards Orn and I was like, man, Orn would be would different. Be like, how exciting is Orn right now? Everyone would be thinking it. How exciting is Orn versus Sion instead of Gragas versus Sion? Oh, sorry, versus Gragas. Like, how exciting would that be? Also, this one fan, camera in their face twice. Like, she is on the defense right now. Camera the third time, we're away. Okay, cameraman. Got to leave the fans alone because we're about to get into Summoner's Rift. We don't have time to be looking and making sure that the fans are happy for this because it's about top esports versus NIP. This is about drafts that we have never seen before. Ladies and gentlemen, Gragas versus Sion. Viego versus Wukong. I know, we're shocked. We've also got a crazy pick in the mid lane. Her name starts with N, ends with Ico. But most of all, our favorite, give it up for the bottom lane, Jinx versus Aphelios!
Bruce. You know, I love the energy you gave that with. If I would have loved had you added the bit of like a boxer, a UFC twist of like, in the blue corner, you know, <laughs> you could have you you gone all the way. You even got the voice for it. I don't, so I'm not even going to attempt to do it. Sorry out there, uh, Bruce and Michael Buffer. As, uh, ooh, Angel. Oh, hell yeah. Oh. Hang on. This is better. This is better. There's a flash going away. Knock up from Playwood's good, but you got the flash from Angel. At least there's a fancy start here with Top Esports getting a summoner advantage. Again, both of these teams, I think, have been teams who've shown that they're willing to scrap. And I'm always happy whenever we really kind of move away from Enchanters because not only just looking for opportunities in the lane, it means that you could potentially expect more roaming to be able to come through, right? Mark and Joao will have a higher impact on the map rather than, you know, if it was Lulu, Melio, like last game. And again, Fotik and Joao have something to prove. They're both going up against the people that replace them on top esports. Shadow going to prove himself in China as well as over to Tien. He finds himself the invade here. Level two versus level two. Tien needs an extended trade here as blue on the edge of getting that patience bar reset. Both smites are available. Tien goes in for the kill here. Bop on the head. We're getting close. That buff as well. If it goes over, could be the differences. Now for the smite, it goes to Shadow. He Shadow gets the help it. and Tien's out of there. The health bar low and Shadow big up here for the Italian Stallion. And we saw in our last game what these types of jungle leads could do, right? Because now it's like, what's Tien going to do? He's going to just move straight to his red. Is he going to try and move into Shadow's blue side jungle? Because you look at the lane prios, Angel's pushing in mid, Invincible has control of top. Not really too many options open there. This could just snowball into an uncontrollable lead for Shadow. And again, Viego already tonight. We've seen it. Uh, that lead through early jungle can grow to be massive. As he moves down towards bottom side river, he's still got his own camps to clear. Red buff available, his own blue. Lyric, the chance that Shadow can three buff here, depending on what Tien's path looks like. Yeah, and you can see now the soul laners of NIP getting those wards down to try to spot out if Tien goes mm -hmm. for it. I think if Tien went for an invade, he'd be smart enough to be like, okay, I'm going to jump over Dragon Wall, uh, Rift Herald Wall, and look for the invade that way, but won't even go for it in the end. So, yeah, this should just. Uh, turn into what is a big lead for the side of NIP. Hell, even in the mid lane, look at what Angel's doing to Rookie, keeping complete control yep. of the 1v1 matchup for now. We did talk about Rookie's ability to lane, how good it was. I mean, again, Angel can hold the bar. We also mentioned that Angel on Weibo and Suiting all those years, uh, he's he built up a really solid foundation in the mid lane, but has also become a solid mid laner himself, as you're also alluding to his 2020 year at Worlds, especially on picks like the Akali. Uh, with that lead already showing us that Angel is very switched on yet again. It's Lyric. You know what this is? Is it a... Is it a... Oh, no. It's not anything. No. Okay. Well, you just said to okay. let it happen. You just said to let it happen. Uh, I do. I do, brother. Sorry about that. Well, at least Tien, the positive for top esports is he does get his blue buff with jungle being shown in the bottom lane as well. So uh, Tien able to actually get something back on the map. And when I say his blue, I mean the enemy's blue which should have been his on his own side of the map, but at least, hey, catching up for the top esports jungle means that gold is starting to shrink out a little bit from before. I'm so surprised as well. Like, he must know that Tien's invading him now because, again, they were spotted trying to go for that play on bot side. But considering the fact that Rookie had just recalled, Angel would still have been around. Like, even Invincible would have had a quicker time to move down, but Invincible... Oh, he just used body slam. Take the flash, Tien. Take the flash. Take it, brother. Brother, take the flash. There we go. All right, invincible down. Yep, at least we got, you know, Tian listening into the comms, even if even if NIP didn't want to follow through with the dive. Probably was, you know, right call in reference to NIP didn't have much of a wave, but still, TS now finding ways to get back in. Uh, still, I believe, is a camp lead for Shadow, especially now that he's invading <laughs> even more because he stole away all three camps the first time around. Uh, sure. Tian didn't take the Wolves from Shadow, so we'll be able to maintain that golden experience lead in the jungle. He's trying to take the Gromp, though. Is this a bridge too far with bottom lane moving in? Jackie Love and Mark hovering around. Draws here. Look at where Fotik is. Draws going to have to lantern him in. There we go. The lantern is said to get out. Shadow does get the Gromp. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not type worth it all, chat, for that first blood. <laughs> no, you don't. Is trying desperately to take the lantern. Can't do it. Ends up going down. And now, I mean, the kill went over to Jackie Love. So exactly 
who you wanted on too, getting him a little bit more gold in his pocket. And right, 80 carry meta all centered around Jackie Love being the big primary carry. And I feel like so far in, in the first two series, Jackie Love has been one of the members who delivered. He hasn't been one of uh, the really like weak points for TS or the reason why they lost to LNG as we're gonna see here. Wanting to go for the Gromp. Looks like never intending to fight. Knockup comes through into the Gravitum. So gets uh -huh. locked up even longer. And then just having enough for Shadow. Tries to get to it. Kind of goes a little bit past it. But even at that point, it looked like it was done and dusted. And that his life was forfeit. Really nice from Mark. Quick to that Lantern as well. So big brain here from the enemy support. As top esports get the first blood. You mentioned it's on Jackie Love. So we kind of rut roll with that one. Shadow losing his life lyric does slow down the tempo a little bit, but at least he got Scuttle Crab. He's still a level up, despite giving the kill over to Jackie Love. We are still looking at a pretty strong jungler here as him and Tien scuff it out. Uh, with Dragon spawning as well, right? They want to be down here at the bottom lane. They do have priority to do so. They're going to make their way in first. We're going to see if Rookie has enough time after answering this wave to really come and try and dissuade this. Doesn't look like they're going to go for it at first, so maybe for Rookie, the play is push in mid. Uh, and then you could start leaning down. Worst case is top esports. You all just back off and you've at least made it so Angel has lost some CS. Right, so we go down. Lantern given over Mark. All right, the engage there. Pop Blossom flash gets a oh, two man. Jackie Love at the edge. The Tangle Barb's well connecting to him as he has to cleanse away. Angel, blessed be for that. Yeah, Angel being the member to deliver. You said it, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rookie, and he is showing it here in this first game. Gives over presence in mid, moves over first, so Rookie gonna go back, at least deny a few CS, but still you're gonna be happy with that one, finding some kills. I guess the sad thing is you, you weren't able to get any more flashes off that play, and hell, NIP actually were the team who, who ended up blowing more flashes from this play, is we're gonna get to see the replay here, right? Top Esports wanna be the aggressors, but their, their angel goes. And that hitbox right on the edge as well. Lyric, I think we're going to have to put in the ticket for that one. Why can I not see the Pop Blossom edge uh, from river to a higher ground in lane? I feel like as an AD, I'd be annoyed at that, not being able to see where the rage is. As, uh, still, Jackie Love caught on the pinky toe at the very least. It gives NIP another window to keep this early game nice and fast. Yeah, and NIP are just going to keep it going because look, two Threshes coming from the enemy jungle. Rookie's going to never know which is which. What's he going to do? Oh, there's so many of them. There's the hook coming through. Tangle barbs as well. Rookie just caught out. Doesn't get the flash. Doesn't get to ulti. Just gets to sit there and watch himself perish. Man, this Nico pick is starting to become an issue. And it's the reason why this, this pick is so commonly banned. I feel like we've already seen so many great Nico performances here in the LPL. Angel just delivering another one. Yigao, in my mind, who really has been the GOAT with, with all of his funny transformations, but Angel showing, at least in terms of damage, laning, being able to step up and put a game on your back, is doing it here. And Rookie with a mistake. But Rookie was one of the members who, in their series against LNG, felt like they weren't performing up, up to their usual standard. I mean, Rookie, again, when we have such a high expectation, anything but perfection is not accepted here as Shadow with the Herald looking towards topside, low health bar onto Wayward, but a turret hit from Invincible, Matt doesn't make it too good as Tien now with the ulti himself as well, might have to use it, but he's already so low, Heartbreaker onto the clone, double Cyclone, Shadow needs to get over the wall, but Flash ain't available, he's dead, <laughs> Wayward can't save his life as Invincible dunks him down, a one for one trade with junglers hitting the ground. Why is Wayward laughing? so much of <laughs> that play happening. If anything, NIP end up the better side with the fact that Invincible now having these double buffs gets the wave in, like, Wayward's still not here. And yeah, Wayward just, I guess, having a jolly old time, wanting to be at a bit of a handicap to go against Invincible. Sure. What you get, though, because this is yeah, fun. Go. This, this was a fun one, right? Jungler's wanting to go at it. Tien, of course, having those double buffs with Shadow. Once again, getting the better end of the trades to start off with. Not able to connect with the right one. The Heartbreaker onto the right Wukong. But still, big enough the animation goes through. Ends up with the double buffs. We take those for the side of NIP. That's rough, man. Again, just uh, a couple of seconds earlier, maybe Tien survives there as... With the kill going over, you already mentioned it. You got some time with the turret too. Invincible's in a great spot here. Already through the lane, already through the game. A bit of a CS I mean, advantage. And 2K now gold, gold lead, lead overall for NIP. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Game, yeah. 
Posh Dammler. This is what we talked about, know, man. I, again, they're, they're great early game team. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm always conflicted coming into games like this, where I'm like, okay, NIP... NIP used to be V5, and you know, I'll always have an undying love for V5, still have their jersey rearing and ready to go, but Rookie was on V5, and Rookie's Rookie, so, it, you know, it's a, it's an internal conundrum of, of who do you support in a matchup like this, or do you support no one? You just come in and be like, you know, the better team wins, hands off the wheel. Well, do you not have the same you. conundrum? No, I don't. Not at all, brother. Oh, I not forgot, you're just... You're just all about the shy. Wherever the shy is is where your heart goes. Or has yeah, that changed? No, no, it hasn't changed, brother, dude. Everything's about the shy. You know, I go to sleep, think about the shy. Wake up, think about the shy. I'm, I'm brushing my teeth. I wonder what the shy is doing right now. I wonder how he's going. Does the shy brush his teeth or does his skill you know, just do it for him, you know? Funnily enough, this actually isn't that irrelevant to this matchup. A lot of the players in this server have been on teams with the shy. True. On both sides. You know, it's... Kind of crazy is okay. That was uh, not a fake anything one. about to happen. Yeah, Shadow moving into position because Chemtech Drake is going to be number two here. So NIP interested in the bot side while Top Esports are matching for the time being. Right now, I'm thinking about what would the, would the Shy do in this play? Probably TP down and immediately pull out a fight as Top Esports have that available to them. But I'm going to pause for now because both top laners can match it. Yeah, and then, then we ask ourselves, what would the Shy do if he was a support in a jungler here? Is maybe it's what Jwa's doing right now, angling forward aggressively. What if we're in Shadow's TP'd in by now? It's not Shadow's Angel actually making his way on the plate. <laughs> it plank, is. Getting a bait in there myself. Actually, not going to get the for his rookie as well. There's TP, as we said, wayward a little bit low, but Gragas on the other side, invincible, running into the dragon at 2k. We're going to have a brawl out as Angel's position is everything. He's got blood. He's got pop blossom. Dragon goes down. Rocket kills wayward look at angel though his angle could be good with the tangle barbs there as well cyclone only late for tn nip they are looking red hot in game one yeah just coming out ahead in these fights really good plays from draw there he's one that initially locked wayward down they got a lot of damage on him and now sure they do ultimately lose to dragon but you look at bot wave already getting crashed into turret mid lane you're already able to respond get that one in check and we'll get to see the replay because this started out being a bunch of chaos draw actually not connecting the hook to start things off but it's wayward i uh, think he can absorb a lot more damage than i guess he realistically could does ultimately end up losing out on the drake for the side of nip is tian is just able to come in and get a bit of a steal but look at all the damage that was put on wayward from getting played into the box he goes down to photic and then it's here the tangle barbs that you hit on into a death sentence so in my mind draw the real mvp of this play and they just convert to more kills and now the sneak goes huge I mean, despite Draw just running next to the Scion, I guess that's what he thought. It doesn't matter. Fotik's going to get the kill. I'm just going to stand there and let Wayward punch everything into me. And Jackie Love get a free ult after the fact as well. I love it. Uh, not giving two dams of a shake as both AD carries now after that play. After everything, have a kill each. Kraken first, Stormraiser first, as you can see on your screen. But Angel, he's the one with mobility now too. That flash still up and available with a Proto Belt in hand. He's really been a, a bigger name than Rookie this game. And guys, you know, I like Rookie too, just as much as I like the Shy. But you got to give respect to Angel here. He has been soaring up high on this Nico pick. Rookie's been quiet as hell. Again, we're, we're, we're concerned because Rookie is not someone you talk about being quiet. No, and it, it's like you said, such a high expectation. To me, will still be, you know still is second best mid laner in the history of league of legends no one has eclipsed that title from him you know him being the one after faker in my mind but yeah mm -hmm. at least three series in bit of a slow start did have a better time in their last series in their win against edg than the lng one but angel like you're saying getting the better now shadow gonna look to use the aggression that the bot lane duo is putting up in mid and try to convert this in a herald Okay, Rookie has to be careful again, not getting a trade there, just talking about him. And up they pop as Tien versus Shadow happens. Meanwhile, Jackie Love has to cleanse away. There's the Flash Draw. Again, Lantern in the passage, but Draw doesn't have any backup. He might actually just die here for his commitment. The box comes in late. Jackie Love picks up the kill, and meanwhile, Tien, bonk on the old Nogarino. Top Esports just got two out of nowhere. <laughs> We're giving it IP too much praise. It's going to their heads. And now TS, yeah, just nice punish uh, coming through on both sides. I'm sure we're going to replay that because Dwarf's going in. He absolutely bursted out. 
Now it leads into a Rift Herald for the side of top B Swords. We can see Jackal getting some nice damage down in mid. But hey, at least Invincible has been able to keep up the advantage he's had since earlier. And again, it must feel good when Tien gets that, you know, that bonk on the noggin, man. Feels pretty good, especially with Shadow's early game against him. As we look at the replay, Lyric, this started pretty deep into top esports jungle. Yeah, Shadow trying to aggress on Tien, but the real side of the Final Fantasy is draws. He goes in, gets the flay, but gets flayed into huge amounts of damage. Turret, Moonlight Vigil, everything thrown out, and Fotik just not able to compete with the amount of burst that Nefelio springs at this point in the game, especially with, with the difference in items. Shadow gonna go down too, but again, when you think of something like the Storm Razor, about more of the burst that it brings compared to Kraken Slayer, you know, the ramping damage Hello? that comes for Rookie. Oh, I was hiding. Okay, Shadow with a follow-up. Rookie, dude, he is just not getting a game to play. Shadow with another kill. Just when you thought NIP were losing a bit of traction, they pull it back in again. Draw once again, finding the opportunity, and Angel still the uh, kind of the big man on either side of the rift, which is one of the reasons why NIP didn't have the damage to contend in that topside fight right there. Their main artillery piece not being there to contend. Now we wait. Dragon is upon us. 30 seconds until we get to the point that NIP hold control. We've got a Mountain Dragon Lyric, and that can only be one good thing for both of these teams. The front line, beyond killing, beyond approachable, a Mountain Soul that has no other competition. Wayward walks down, and we know it's Ooh. on. Yeah, popping the, the, the Scryer, looking for wards, and looking for Otik, waiting in the wings, he's, he's susceptible. Any wayward ult that comes through right now, all of NIP will die. Mark my words. Oh, they're marked. Top Esports walking in. Now wayward. Slow down. It's only Angel. Dragon at 4K. Draw brings him out. Wayward's coming in. All right, the whole team on top, but a good ult from Jackie Love. Tien, again! He likes again. doing the old bunk! He just walks in. NIP get nothing so far as Mark locked back in. Everfrost helps out. Rookie oh. now approaching as Mark does die in the end. Gives a reset here for Shadow. He can press W, but he needs a target. Wayward is zoning them out. Top Esports now turning to Invincible themselves as Shadow reset City. And all of a sudden, we do get some gold back on NIP, but Top Esports, they got themselves. NIP, NIP keep winning every fight, but my god, they need to actually secure themselves the objective. Tien on point with these smites this time around. And I'd be hoping to keep up this pressure against low health bars, but it doesn't seem like it should turn into anything more than just the kills they've gotten and a bit of pressure coming out from Shadow. But yeah, my god, we're going to see here. <laughs> Bringing in quite slow, but this fight escalated so quickly. It's going to be here where Foti gets pulled out of the pit, but huge Moonlight Vigil from Jackalip to force these members back. But look at Tiet. Gets body bopped up right before the dragon really gets in striking distance and just winning out on the smite once again. Shadow's not even coming through. Mark here, I was kind of surprised and, and kind of how cheeky he was with this, right? Popping the Scryer, waiting in the brush, just opens up for the engage to be able to come out. And then just going a little bit too far. Invincible, luckily, that the Flash manages to escape. But the damage has already been done by the side of, of NIP. And a lot, in my mind, a lot of this was Top Esports' own, own making. It really was. Again, Top Esports, a little bit rough around the edges. You might get the Dragon, but 3,000 gold still exists between them and NIP. With two items now placed in the hands of Photix inventory. He's got the Gale Force added with the Kraken. Wayward's gonna have a bit more trouble than you think. We don't have a Zonyas yet here for Angel on his Nico, but surely we can't be too far off. As we look at the gold lead on the side, Jackie Love has it all for top esports. And no wonder he has been the one picking up the kills here, but is it gonna be enough, Lyric? Because we've we've already talked about the reset ability from NIP, the all-in potential they have. Jackie Love doesn't exactly have a Lulu or a Milio this game. No, and I also feel like a lot of top esports strength would come from the game plan of again rookie and tien being able to connect to that back line and take out both quite easily but with rookie yeah. being set decently far behind nip have so much damage with the fact that their their kills have actually gotten spread pretty evenly across all of their damage dealers both angel and shadow also being on key a uh, key item completions it means it should be very easy for like draw to hook 
into damage from Nico. Rocket from Jinx. Bam. Reset for Viego. Oh, Whoa. here we go. Angel just in on the corner as well. Cleanse used again. Angel getting a good pick and a summoner. Wayward launches in though. Rookie's angle. Everfrost and the charm. Oh. Look at Rookie come in. He's been quiet all game in Shadow. That's the heartbreaker out. He can't get a reset. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's Big Bad Rookie with the rest of Top Esports. And once they launch, they launch hard. And we said it'd be hard for TS because Rookie shouldn't be able to find access to the back line. But Fotix just being there, being opened up on by everyone. Wayward being the one to find it. And now two turrets going over to top esports. Can they actually find an inhibitor here? I don't think so. They're trying though. All right, as the inhibitor looks to drop on down, top esports getting out of there before they get re-engaged on gold lead. Minimize the 1k. It feels nice to finally talk about the man. There's a lot more to it than that lyric as Shadow continues to chase up. We've got one minute 15 till the next dragon, so it feels like Shadow wants to delay the reset as long as possible, especially with Baron up as well. Lyric, top esports have to make the facts, but Baron is here and NIP are ready to start. Oh, but still, it's it, it's lucky timing, right? Because they haven't managed, they haven't reset yet. Had their reset, this probably would've just been a free Baron to NIP. At least now TS can try to contest. But look at Invincible. He's still behind them on the flank. Oh, Pop Blossom again, 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 again! Oh, it's huge! It just comes through. Angel is out matching. You know, I shouldn't have said the other mid laner's name. Who is he to the man with wings? Angel getting a pick off in front of the Baron. No Jackie Love. That's the strongest member down. Also, kudos to Invincible. Big explosive cast separates them apart. Kind of pulls Jackie Love in. And they pick up the kill. So now they're definitely going to be able to pick up this Baron. I know there's super minions in their base, so they got to deal with that annoyance. Invincible's on top of it right now, but with this Baron buff, they should definitely be able to hold out, get control of mid once again, and wait for that inhibitor to respawn. Man, top esports having a rough time of it. They might have mid open, but this game still feels like NRP are always clawing back, always finding something. As you said, with Baron, we're now going to be talking a little bit more intensely about how top esports can counter that, because Dragon's up, Lyric. This will be sold point if TS can get it, but NIP, again, they've got the waves under control. Look at top, look at mid now. If Dragon goes on long enough, NIP are going to get a lot more than the objective. Top Esports trying to be cheeky with it, having Wayward wait in that brush to see if he can find a decimating smash. And now we're going to see, can Shadow maybe finally steal one back of his own, or do they just go for the fight? Look how much damage under Wayward, though. He's going to have to flash away from the death sentence as well, but look, Fotic in the back one. It's that Jinx, he just destroys him. Somehow TN gets the smite again, but they've already lost a member and given a reset. Pop Blossom going through Angel. That time it was pretty rubbish, but hey, NIP, they found one pick. But Lyric, uh, I actually think Top Esports are probably happy because they got the dragon again. How does it keep happening? Oh, but can NIP find a little bit more off this? Not going to go for it in the end. I want to highlight, this is actually pretty a, a pretty big deal for TS as well. Because now they're sitting on two mountains, one away from Seoul. And if they get Mountain Soul, I mean, they have a Scion. They have this huge yep. beefcake that's going to be hard to get through. Still, NIP at least have shown that they're continuously winning out in these fights. Uh, Jackie Love, oh my god, oh my god. Fodic flashes in! He does gone. the Jackie Love to Jackie Love. Jackie Love has just been loved by Fodic, the old lady carry of top beast forts. And all of a sudden, we're back in the tempo drive again with the team with Baron. Yeah, and they're going to keep just trying to barrel through mid. And this will can keep Rookie locked up down in that bot lane. Rookie doesn't have TP either. So NIP should be able to answer with an inhibitor turn of their own. They're even going to look for more. 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 I mean, Rookie looks like his base has stopped. You can see Invincible staying down there. Inhibitor's there. I guess NIP are stopping for now. And there's three members of top esports. Enough to defend. But inhibitor for inhibitor mid. Now the mid lane is open with power. And that Baron buff getting full usage from NIP Lyric. That's a four and a half gold uh, K gold power play, if I could use my English properly. That's a lot of money given over to NIP when they're already in the league. Gonna go into a replay and see how this all went down. Is for NIP, we have Angel off on the flank. Invincible joins him, and it's like, oh, for top esports, <laughs> what do you do? Comes in with the Pop Blossom, Invincible with the nice. E-Flash to make sure they're locked down as well. Just beautiful combo. We've been hitting on Angel all game, but Invincible, seriously, huge step up so far in the beginning of this split, as then they chase down the Scion. 
NIP showing that they're coming to play this split, which is always so exciting. In spring, people were looking at NIP to still be one of these contenders, at least around the middle of the pack after the year they had uh, back when they still were V5 in 2022. Didn't exactly live up to those expectations, but the few tweaks with an incredibly beautiful arena, seems like NIP might be, uh, might be ready to step up. This is the old organization that got 0 and 16, not once, but twice. Of course, when they were V5. And remember, I, I think it's never been done before. There was a VCS team that obviously hit that low as well and double split. But in a major region, it has never, ever been done before. And then finally enough, V5 at the spring after they did it, and we ended up getting to playoffs. But that's a different story. Is uh, Jackulov getting caught out here, Lyric, and Fotig just... Giga chat flashes on him. Oh, yeah, just goes in, like you said, does the Jackie love to Jackie love himself. And going back to the never been done before, I, I remember I almost thought Team Coast did it, but I also I also think they went like one in like 16 or one in 17 back in the day in LCS. So they were close. They were close, but sadly couldn't couldn't pull off the, the heights. Very, very true. I mean, look again. Uh, I, I think V5 only ones to have done it realistically is it's better times, but it is only a game one. However, top esports getting classed in many different angles. Four bounties, excuse me, three if I could read as well. Uh, three bounties between Angel, Botic, Shadow, as they now approach bottom lane tier two. You can see that the mid wave is going to be pushing in quite strong here and meeting directly in the middle with top side slowly pushing as well. NIP trying to use that range on Botic to get near the turret and do some of that AOE towards top esports as they continue to try to fit. Yeah, just, I mean, again, the, what the Rapid Fire does, giving him so much even more range to play with. Shadow now, who's already become huge, 4-3 and 5 on the Viego, having the GA. Sonya's done in mid, like, there, there's so many defensive elements now to what, to NIP's composition. You not only have to win, like, the initial brawl, you have to be able to outlast things like, like Zanya's and the GA being able to come through Lantern from Dwa to help be able to reposition anyone who's in a little bit too uh, too much danger. You don't have any of those same tools on the side of top esports yet because since they've fallen behind, they're already just lacking damage and need to focus on being able to get up to speed. Jackie looked close to that LDR, but not quite yet. He's going back now. I want to see if he adds anything on top. Yeah, okay. Yep. Just actually finished it in base. So three item of Felios is there. Dragon up in 15 seconds, the top esports all the way back in their base. They're gonna have to face check this one. And NIP still have control. You can see double control ward there, Lyric. It's pretty dark here. The night is full of terrors for TES. It really is. Seriously, like a death sentence coming out from a bush. Angel walking up, finding another pop blossom. Just so many things that can be done. Sadly for them, not gonna even try to look for any type of 50-50. Just gonna move, get topside control for now. I don't believe they should be able to start up a Baron. But when it's top esports, you always got to be a little bit on your toes. Are just going to okay. get the vision and back out for now. Well, top esports at least getting some comfortability as NIP move to the Baron themselves. They'll have the river. The shadow moves up. There's one control there, but Scuttle also helping out as Tien playing a little bit with fire. And NIP, this is where they found the successful play from before with the Midsbull and Angel tag teaming up and smacking them down. As Rookie pushes up this wave lyric, it's still just playing a game of check as it feels like. Between going into river, backing away, NIP like, oh, we could threaten Baron. The top esports are still there themselves, getting some vision. Doing a little bit of a dance here with blue suede shoes as Vota continues to step up and try and oh, give Jackalove. themselves a bigger edge. Jagulov also got some nice damage on Shadow, though. Shadow walking a little bit too far forward, now having to go for the reset himself, so... TS are going to have a window to where they're going to try and poke their heads into River. You can see they are being very cautious about it, not knowing what's going on on the map because a few moments ago the Observer showed us what uh, their vision looks like. So not having all too much information themselves. Are going to do the correct play, pivot to mid first, try and get this wave in. Then you try to walk into River. This invincible just hovers around mid for the time being. Top Esports paying the respect. NIP due diligence again. Man with a lot of chuck-a-lug in his hand and a belly full of mead decides to run forward. Invincible is level 16 after all and still very hard to kill. This Tien's angle here could be big. Botix the one stepping up. Tien invisible. He got him. Botix going to get back thanks to Twal though. So now there's an opportunity for NIP. But Shadow, his angle ain't great. He goes into GA straight away. And Invincible can't get near. Death Spending Smash. 
flashed himself. Rookie gets over the wall, but he doesn't have the damage. Wayward's still there. Rookie tries to jump back in. Flash charm. That's the spirit. He finds Invincible with the help of Jackie Love and the team. And NIP Lyric, they botched the play as Fotic got called out. Fotic gets caught out. Shadow kind of going in by his lonesome a little bit too early. The GA gets popped. And now four top esports. Not going to have to just twiddle your fingers and wonder how to get this control. They were being very respectful, and now they're going to start moving towards this Baron. Top Esports are going to start it off as well, but Lyric, look at the guns here for Jack Love. Money to get rid of the Gravitum as NIP move closer. No flash on the Jinx. Close. Ulti. War. Fotic. Big Moonlight Vigil. He just got the Infernum as well. The Shadow from the back. Spites haven't been good all game. This is his chance, though, with both available a Heartbreaker as well at 2k. 50-50 Shadow. The charm timing! Rookie charmed him and he couldn't move a muscle as Tien goes invisible, but he can't get the range. Mark now helping out with that with the Shirelli's Blessing. And yet again on top of Fotic, it's bonkin' time. Dwar tries to slow him down as Mark now chasing after him, but with the TP in, Invincible is all on his lonesome. Fotic now doing the same thing as just like that NIP's power and prowess in this game goes to a firm zero. Yeah, I mean, seriously, I don't know how Top Esports always does it. It might be messy, but they show they can always keep it close and contend with anyone. And with these death timers, they're probably just going to look to end. We've got ourselves such a good game from NIP, but Top Esports always fighting back. It feels almost undeserved in some characteristics as NIP Angel now still left with died. Angel. He hasn't yet, but is he going to go in? I mean, he's got no flash available. Pop Blossom is there, but the Nexus is just going to drop. He gets a good ulti, but the game's just over. Now fighting for kills, TES. Get a saving grace with one last team fight to win it all. It's such a tragedy for the side of NIP. Doing so many things right. There were so many good fights on their side. We, we hit on all the playmaking from Angel. Like, Chua had some great engages. Invincible winning in that top side. So many things going for you. But really just coming down to a couple small, a small missteps in fights. Giving it over to TS. And that's also why kind of moving over to Top Esports, they are such a scary team to go up against. You might watch, you know, Top Esports play every other day and be like, what What do you mean? They're so messy. They don't look that good. But whether it's against one of the top tier teams, like an LNG or an EDG, or, you know, against an IP where we still don't really know where they fit in, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone. They could win or lose yeah. a game from anywhere and, and out of nowhere. So it's still nice to see that Top Esports still has that flavor. And they even feel a bit more controlled this split, which is always nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree on, I agree on that. But look, lyric, I just think heartbreaking for NIP. Yeah. Overall, when Angel had some really good setup engages with people like uh, with people like Invincible on his Gragas top, we also saw that this game Shadow was, I guess, the more influential jungle at certain times. A, a lot more in the face of Ning, but sorry, not Ning, bloody Tien. Uh, but I feel like overall, you know, we saw the Dragons hurt NIP there. The sole point, the threat lyric was taken away where three times Tien got to walk up and get a free smite from under the nose of Shadow while yeah. the whole team yeah. was taking Dragon. It's moments like that, right? There's a lot of small things as NIP you're going to kick yourselves over that game, which like we both just highlighted it's a tragedy because you could seriously like name so many positive things across the board that like each of the members of NIP did. But still, I wouldn't say all is lost for NIP. Hopefully it doesn't hit them too much in terms of uh, the morale going into the next game because it's like, hey, again, you're going up against this team full of like big name stars that have reached all these heights and had all these accolades. You don't really have that same just history experience behind you. And you're sure. showing that with this with a few small tweaks, you would you wouldn't have only beaten T, yes. You would have probably smashed TS in that game. And so Absolutely. I'm excited going into next game to see what NIP can adapt to be able to, to, to find a win. Because who knows who's going to take game two. And again, game two, you know, should give us a little bit more from top esports because the early game was a, a lot more quiet than usual. I know we talked about the, the kills per minute being down and TS being a bit more controlled. But still, like the identity of players like Rookie, even Jackie Love in some moments, uh, you know, like TN. In some of his I think best TN games especially was awfully quiet, and it's a shame to see. But I mean, for top esports, I guess the team fighting is is what you want to see, especially with how they've honed that over the years. Uh, but overall, NIP 
disappointing. Hopefully it doesn't affect them, considering that NIP were really relying on Angel in that game. I think there was a big yep. case of mid-diff uh, in the first 20, 25 minutes of the game. Oh, definitely was, right? Like, Angel was not only winning in lane, which, it, you know, it is a favorable lane matchup for the side of the Nico, but was also, like, transferring that pressure over here. Was a playmaker for the side of NIP, which is exactly what you want, especially when we see that Shadow is someone who is willing to be this aggressive and, and play this far forward. The fact that your mid laner is trying to link up is working beautifully. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very curious to see about how Game 2 goes. And I really hope one thing that keeps true is like getting more of these engaged supports down in the bot lane, giving people like Chua and Mark the ability to show their stuff, find these engages and set up for big plays. And a man we haven't talked about too much in this post game, Jackie Love. Like I said, so far in top esports three series, he really has been the member to consi consistently deliver for them, which I feel like is something that all Jackie Love fans in the world gotta be gotta be partying about right now. True, absolutely. Again, there's a lot of them with how much they love and hate him. I just want to point out, there was no time in that game apart from five minutes where Top Esports had a gold lead. Top Esports won the game in a gold deficit. NIP were like seven, 8,000 gold up, then the team fight, then it was like 3K and Top Esports won the game. So it just shows you the story of this game from a team that came so close. And a bit of a shame when Angel, Botic, players like Shadow as well, had some pretty great moments, but just couldn't close it out in the final fight that mattered. And I wonder just how this will Im impact draft going into next game, right? Where it's like, okay, NIP get their hands on the coveted Nico. We see why it got first picked, and that pick wasn't a problem at all. But it's always like, I w does losing on a champion like affect your perception of draft going into the next game, you know, because that's something that's just very human and very easy to happen where it's like as NIP, I mean, right. The Nico pick was great. So hopefully we still see the priorities kind of come in along similar lines. Uh, and that again, not nothing. gets too shaken up over a loss. Yeah. And again, hopefully the, yeah, as you said, the mental staying intact in their own stadium, especially when there were so many good moments leads us to a more competitive or, or rather maybe a more competitive series that it's not a 2-0. Folks, we're going to take a break and hope that when we come back, top eSports are still firing on all guns, but 